mabathalang pagpapala para sa mga COVID-19 frontliners. Isang panalangin. Panginoong Diyos, sa gitna ng kasalukuyang pakikipagdigma namin laban sa COVID-19 pandemic, ay dumudulog kami sa iyo para sa iyong mabathalang pagpapala sa mga bayaning nangunguna sa amin sa labang ito. Ang mga doktor, nurse, at iba pang medical professionals. Ang mga siyentipiko at iba pang dalubhasa sa larangan ng kalusugan. Ang mga opisyal at kawani ng pamahalaan kasama na ang mga sundalo at mga pulis. Ang mga media practitioners. Ang mga manggagawa sa sektor ng pagkain. Ang mga manggagawa sa simbahan. At mga driver, gwardiya at janitor. Sa tapang, katapatan at kusay nila sa pagganap ng kanilang tungkulin sa paglaban sa COVID-19 pandemic, ng timpalaan mo po sila ng biyaya ng inyong pagsanggalang laban sa anumang kapahamakan at biyaya ng patnubay sa kanilang paglilingkod. Sa hirap ng katawan at isip na kanilang binaranas dahil sa mga kakulangan, at kahinaan ng sistemang pangkalusugan sa aming bansa, biyayaan mo po sila ng ginhawang madarama nila sa kanilang puso. Ang ginhawang mula sa katotohanan dahil sa kanila ay nasasagit mula sa kamatayan marami. Sa pagsasakripisyon nila ng panahon at pagkakataon na makapiling, mayakap at mapangalagaan ang kanilang pamilya, para makapaglingkod sa lipunan at sa mga biktima ng COVID-19, pagkalooban mo po sila ng biyaya ng pangangalaga sa kanilang mga mahal sa buhay laban sa virus na kanila ring nilalabanan para sa iba. Sa hindi marapat at hindi makatarungang diskriminasyon na nararanasan ng marami sa kanila, pagkalooban mo po sila ng biyaya ng pangunawa sa kahinaan at kamalian ng iba at ng biyaya ng tibay ng loob na patuloy na maglingkod sa kabila nito at iba pang pagsubok. At sa marami sa kanila na nagpulis ng buhay dahil sa pakikipaglaban sa COVID-19 pandemic, kukupin mo po sila sa iyong kaharian at pawiin ang lungkot at pangungulila ng kanilang mga pamilya at kaibigan. Panginoong Diyos, basbasan mo ang mga COVID-19 frontliners upang hindi lamang sila patuloy na manguna sa amin sa pagsubok na ito kung hindi patuloy rin silang naging uwaran namin sa pagiging bayan para sa iba at sa aming bayan. Gawaran mo po, Panginoong Diyos, ng iyong mabathalang pagpapala ang mga anak mong COVID-19 frontliners dahil sila ay tunay na daluyan ng iyong pagkalinga at pagmamahal sa amin. Amen. Let's now proceed to the read, uh, reading and approval of the minutes. Mr. Chairman. Kong Boeing. I move to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the joint meeting of the Committee on Registry Franchises and Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability held on 29 and 30 of June. July 1, 2, and 6, 2020. Uh, and I uh, move to approve the same. There's a motion. Second, Mike. Second. Second the motion. Second then. Duly second then. Without any objection, motion is approved. Motion is approved. Good afternoon. We concluded last Monday the hearing on the franchise application of ABS CBN. Today, we will hear the summation and closing of arguments for and against the application. For this 13th meeting, we are joined again by members in the plenary and via Zoom. The Secretariat will rec record your attendance. Thank you for your presence and patience to be with us. Comsec, please recognize our guests from ABS-CBN who are now attending via Zoom. Good afternoon. We have the ABS-CBN officers via Zoom. Mr. Martin Lopez, Chairman, Mr. Carlo Katigbak, CEO, Ms. Cory Bidana, COO for Broadcast, Attorney Enrique Quiazon, Corporate Secretary, and Mr. Ricardo Tan, Group CFO. We have also Mr. Uh, Attorney Ayo Bautista, their legal counsel, and Ms. Connie Lopez, COS.
Mr. Chair, ngayong araw po ay ang katapusan na ng ating uh, hearing at magkakaroon po tayo na sa mission ng mga issue sa mga kasagutan na tinalakay sa nakaraang labing dalawang pagdinig. Nagpaba binabati po namin at nagpapasalamat kami sa mga miyembro ng House Blue Ribbon Committee maging ng legislative franchises na nakasama po natin sa ating pagpupulong maging sa ating mga guests at resource speakers, particular ang mga eksekutibo ng ABS-CBN. Ang ating pong uh, hearing ay napapanood live stream sa Facebook page ng House of Representatives at gayon din po sa live stream page ni Kuya Jonathan C. Alvarado. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sa kabuuan, ang Joint Committee ay nagkaroon ng labindalawang pagdinig sa mga isyong may kaugnayan na naging performance ng ABS-CBN sa pagpatupad nito sa mga probisyon na nakasaad sa kanyang prangkisa. Maliban pa po ang March 10 meeting ng Committee on Legislative Franchises. Ngayong araw, atin pong pakikinggan ang pagsusuma ng mga usaping lumabas sa mga pagdinig mula po sa panig ng mga pro-ABS-CBN at mga tumututol po sa pagbibigay muli ng prangkisa sa network. Inimbita rin po natin ang abs officer officers sa Zoom sa pulong natin ngayong hapon, just in case may nais pang dinawin sa kanila. Matapos po ang labing dalawang pagdinig ng ating mga komite, inabot po tayo ng kumigit kumulang isang daang oras na nakalap mula sa stakeholders, mga isyong may kaugnayan sa paglabag, sa konstitusyon, franchise, labor, and tax laws. Kinakailangan natin itong gawin upang tugunan ang panawagan ni Speaker Alan Peter Cayetano na kung saan sinabi niyang kailangan patas, komprensibo ang pagtatalakay ng mga isyo kaugnayan sa pangkisa ng ABS-CBN. Sapat po siguro ang labing dalawang araw at magiging summation ngayon upang mabigyan ang mga membro ng legislative franchises at para na rin sa paggabay ng mga membro ng Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability. Ngayong araw po ang summation at tayo po yung mag-desisyon kung kailan ang pagboto. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Maraming salamat, uh, Kong Mike. Ngayon, bago tayo dumako sa summation, meron po tayong mga ilang members na uh, meron lang pong mga manifestation. So, una po dito, nandyan po kasama natin sa Zoom, si Congressman uh, Abelianosa. Kong Abelianosa, you are recognized po para sa iyong manifestation. Habang inaayos po siguro ni Kong Abelianosa yung connection niya, puntahan muna natin si Congressman Edsel Lagman para din sa kanya maikling manifestation. Kong Lagman. Hello. Go ahead po, Kong Lagman. Malino po. Hello. Uh, can I be heard, Mr. Chairman? Alina po, Kong Edsel, please proceed. Uh, Joint Chairman, I just would like to manifest that uh, earlier this afternoon, I filed my summation by reiterating uh, the previous four, five summations I have done with respect to the uh, five uh, constitutional issues and also I have uh, reiterated my assessment with respect to the other issues. Uh, there was a covering letter addressed to both chairmen for this uh, summation. Thank you so much for accommodating my request to submit that uh, separate summation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Maraming uh, salamat po, Kong uh, Edsel Lagman. At tulad po ng ating sinasabi na lagi, lahat po ng members naman ng committee nito ay libre po gumawa ng sarili po nilang summation at assessment ng ating pong mga naging hearings. 
uh, pwede po ninyo yung um, isubmit naman po sa committee yan uh, ang inyong mga sariling mga assessment. Hindi naman po bawal ko yan. Noted po sa inyong assessment, uh, ay sa inyong uh, sariling assessment, uh, Congressman Edsel Lagman. Ngayon po, uh, si Kong Abel Danosa, nandiyan na ba? Wala pa rin. Si Kong Paduano, meron pong manifestation. Kong Paduano, kung ready na po kayo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me, Mr. Chairman? Malino po. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman of both uh, committees, Chairman Alvarez, Chairman Alvarado, distinguished colleagues, co-authors, and authors of this House bills, resource person via Zoom, good afternoon. Mr. Chairman, I choose to be silent behind the series of joint congressional committee hearings on the quest of ABS-CBN Broadcast Network to have its franchise renewed. Though a co-author of House Bill 3713 that aims to grant for the renewal of ABS-CBN franchise, for one thing I believe, I should not be biased from the start of the committee deliberations. The same is true, Mr. Chairman, as two revelations and issues brought into open by the hearings. Despite my silence since day one, Mr. Chairman, I have been closely monitoring the proceedings, inquiries, discussions, the pros and cons, especially from the resource persons. The exchanges between the executives and legal councils of the biggest media network in the country and from my distinguished colleagues and those with supporting as well as opposing stand on the matters at hand have unearthed a lot of things. Everything was an eye opener, not only for the house, but also for the general public. Mr. Chairman, in my several years in the house, I had been consistent in my stand on pressing issues no matter whether I was bashed or praised on multiple platforms. I stood my ground in advancing one, what I perceived to be necessary and vital. To drive my point, Mr. Chairman, allow me to cite examples of controversial bills in the House in my more than six years as member of this hey. When the death penalty bill, Mr. Chairman, was voted upon, I firmly stood on my opposition to it. I voted no because I believe it is not a deterrent against illegal drugs and crimes. To the point that I have even let go membership in the majority all my committee memberships and vice chairmanship during the 17th Congress in my opposition to the death penalty resurrection. Subsequently, moves to, the, to revive the death penalty bill to gain steam in the 17th Congress, while the House swiftly passed the bill in March 2017, minus, of course, my vote. Its counterpart measure remained in the Senate until the last session day. I remained st steadfast on my stand against it. When I supported the train law, Mr. Chairman, I also stress that the law will guarantee that a portion of the revenue from sugar sweetened beverages be passed to the sugar industry. Coming from the sugar producing region in the country, I had to stand for the interest of the industry dog that redounds to my region. If not for the compromise amendment, I might have voted the other way. Thanks to former Majority for Leader Rodi Parinas and to former Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez. When the anti-terror bill was voted upon Mr. Chenan, I voted a resounding yes because I believe in the objectives and the boost the law can give the Filipino people and the whole country in general. Despite of the lobbying, the intense social media propaganda and pressure of course, thanks to our very own, our esteemed minority pro-leader, 
Bene Abante, for respecting and understanding my stand on the issue. This time, Mr. Chairman, I am again expressing and exercising what to me is fair in the midst of recent revelation in relation to ABS-CBN quest for a fresh mandate on its franchise. Although ABS-CBN has been dodging allegation of not paying the correct taxes, there seems to be an engagement with tax avoidance scheme by availing fiscal perks. Big Deeper Digital Content, a subsidiary of ABS-CBN that processes films and TV shows for export to other countries and to different digital platforms, is a company registered with the PESA or Philippine Economic Zone Authority, the country's largest economic zone operator that offers fiscal perks such as waiving of income tax payments, and labor free imports to certain shipments. Big Deeper is perceived as a tax shield for the media giant. Legally, Mr. Speaker, there is nothing wrong with Big Deeper as a PESA registered company, but ABS CBN has been funneling some of its income to Big Deeper, which gives some moral points that is that it is doing so to avoid paying taxes, higher taxes. Mr. Chairman, Big Deeper is a vehicle to reduce the amount of taxes ABS-CBN must pay. From 30%, ABS-CBN will only pay 5% by transferring its income, some of its income to Big Deeper, which is a systematic practice it has been employing. This is how common and unbiased Filipinos easily understand and see the connection between the creation of the Big Deeper. Mr. Chairman, the series of hearings of both back, what I have also personally experienced in terms of fairness, fairness and balanced reporting and in tackling issues through the stations of EBS-CBN. It also brought back issues raised by Senior Deputy Minority Floor Leader, Janet Garin, the former DOH Secretary, issues she had been repeatedly expounded in almost every hearing with the DOH. Another example, Mr. Chairman, when ABS-CBN Ted Pailon keep criticizing a colleague, a congressman whom I personally know, for whatever purpose, not renaming him, but describing him very obviously, he did not give the congressman a chance to air his side. Mr. Chairman, and recently, during the time of BCQ, sometime March or April, ABS-CBN based on a mere Facebook comment, Mr. Chairman, attack on air the quarantine policy facility, quarantine facility in my hometown, Enrique B. Magalona, the province of Negros Occidental. Again, Mr. Chairman, without first getting the facts and considering the circumstances. That was also the time we were calling for volunteers to join us in the fight against COVID. The local government units and volunteers in my hometown were behind the setting up of our first provincial quarantine facility in the province of Negros Occidental. It is in the spirit of volunteerism in my own hometown, Mr. Chairman. ABS-CBN had been advocating volunteerism, Mr. Chairman, having one of the biggest numbers of volunteers nationwide. And yet, through bias reporting, the facility put up negates that advocacy, Mr. Chairman. In the ab above cases that lambasting lasted for months without the network getting the side of officials, Mr. Chairman, as the 12 formal hearings on ABS-CBN renewal of its franchise by the Committee on Legislative Franchises and Good Government and Public Accountability ended.
with revelations behind the media network made public through it. Though, Mr. Chairman, it is hard for me, I came to a conclusion that I am withdrawing my co-authorship of House Bill number 3713 that aims to grant the renewal of the franchise of ABS-CBN. Mr. Chairman, before I end, I wish to ask for apology and understanding of my distinguished colleagues, Representative Joy Tambunting, the principal author of the said House Bill, and to ABS-CBN President, Sir Carlo Katigbak, sir, and to the ABS-CBN family. Thank you for this opportunity, Mr. Chairman. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat po, Congressman uh, Paduano. Ang next po na mag-manifest ay si Congressman Ron Salo. Congressman Salo. Mr. Chairman. Yes, yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay, please proceed, Bob. In light of my previous withdrawal of my authorship of House Bill 6901, I respectfully manifest to the Honorable Committee that my the same be laid on the table. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Noted, Bob. Congressman Salo. Thank you. And next, my manifest. Congressman uh, Mike Defensor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, nito pong huling meeting, hearing natin doon sa political bias, o sa bias ng ABS-CBN, hindi po masyadong nailinaw kung ano ba ang binabanggit nating sitwasyon o yung ating uh, definition ng bias. Naintindihan ko po, marami tayong mga kasama na may sariling mga interpretasyon o pananaw doon sa personal nilang naging experience dito sa bias na pananaw nila na lumabas ng mga pahiyag sa ABS-CBN. But Mr. Chairman, I think the more important issue of bias is actually the very foundation of the franchise issue of ABS-CBN. Ito po tingin ko, Mr. Chairman, doon sa aking binanggit, ang pundasyon kung saan at bakit tayo nagkakaproblema sa pahayag ng ABS-CBN, partikular sa pagtutulak ng kanilang interes at negosyo. Mr. Chairman, ang ating Pangulo nagsasalita po sa oligarkiya or oligarchy. Ang definition po ng oligarchy ay isang maliit na grupo na nagkokontrol ng ating estado. At ang grupo pong to, ang tinutulak niya ang kanyang pansariling interes. Partikular sa isyo ng ABS-CBN ay ang paggamit ng mass media, ang paggamit ng pagpapahayag para itulak ang kanyang sariling interes. And so, Mr. Chairman, when the President mentions that we should dismantle the oligarchy in the Philippines o wasakin natin ang oligarkiya sa Pilipinas, ang kanyang tinutukoy, ang maliit na grupo na nagkocontrol sa ating bansa, nagkocontrol sa kinabukasan ng bawat Pilipino. Ang Pangulo po nagpapalit bawat alim na taon. Ang kongresista nagpapalit bawat tatlong taon. Ang senador, anim na taon. Ang politika po palit ng palit. Pero ang malalaking negosyante sa ating bansa ay patuloy na namamayagpag. Nag-iba ang politiko, nag-iba ang liderato, pero ang interes sa kanilang negosyo ay patuloy. If I may, Mr. Chairman, I would like to quote the book of Mr. Alfred McCoy. Uh, the particular part of this is the rent-seeking families and the state. The book was written entitled
Anarchy of families, state and family in the Philippines. And if I may quote, dito po sa libro niya, binanggit niya na, noong 1992 sabi niya, si Mr. Henny Lopez ay naging chairman ng Media Citizens Quick Count. At pumasok siya doon sa eleksyon. Hindi lang po naman 1992 yan, maging mga nakarang eleksyon. Sa particular na eleksyon na to, tinulungan niya si Presidente Ramos. At dahil nga nanalo si Presidente Ramos, na-consolidate ulit ang poder ng politika. At particular, Mr. Chairman, ang negosyo dito sa ating bansa ng Lopez family. At dito po sa kanyang conclusion, sinabi niya, above all, the history of the Lopez family illustrates the symbiosis between the weak Philippine state and the strength of the country's dominant political families. A contradictory pairing of the state's broad economic powers with the executive's role as a political patron has made rent sinking an imperative for major Filipino families. Through their reliance upon rents, ano po ba yung rent seeking? Ito po yung mga pabor sa paggamit ng poder ng ating gobyerno. Ito po yung monopolia, monopolia na paggamit ng poder ng gobyerno para sa inyong negosyo. An imperative for major Filipino families. The reliance upon rents these families can exploit the state's financial resources and regulatory powers to create optimum conditions from the growth of their corporations. Mr. Chairman, they say that a vote for the continuance of the franchise or a release or a granting of a franchise to ABS-CBN is a suppression of press freedom. But I say, Mr. Chairman, that a yes vote to stop the franchise is a vote to stop perpetuation of an oligarchic state, an oligarchy that continue to suppress our people. Mr. Chairman, if I may see, uh, show the slide, ito pong isyong to ay isang maliit na bahagi ng problema sa atin, sa ating bansa. At ito rin po ay nakabalot sa negosyong itinutulak ng Pamilyang Lopez. Mr. Chairman, ang meral ko po ay napunta sa Pamilya Lopez ng taong panahon ng Pangulong Garcia. Hindi ho yan kahapon lang. Hanggang sa ngayon po, at kailan lamang nawala sa kanilang pagmamayari. Pero 55% po ng binabayaran nating kuryente ay galing sa mga planta o power plants na kanilang pinagagalingan sa pagdaan sa Beralco. Next slide. Mr. Chairman, ito po mga plantang to, ang FGPC o First Gas Power Corporation, FGP Corporation, ay nagkaroon ng kontrata noong 1995, March 14, at July 22, 1999. Yan po ay may 25 taon, 25 years contract sa ating bansa na magtatapos ng 2025 at 2027. Ang miral ko ng panahong pinirma ng kontratang yan, sila din may ari. Pumirma ang miral ko sa parehong kumpanya na silang nagmamay ari. Next slide. Ito po ay garantisado. Kailangan bilhin ang kuryente na kanilang pinuproduce. Kailangan po na bayaran kahit gamitin o hindi ng miral ko. Siyempre, sino ang nagbabayad? Ang ating pong taong bayan. Whatever cost, kanino, pinakita ko sa inyo, 55%. 55% po ang nanggagaling sa power generation. Next slide. Ito po ay nabili ng Metro Pacific ng 2010 lamang. So the past several years, since 1995 and 1999, ang power generation, pag-aari ng Lopez, ang Meralco, pag-aari ng Lopez. Pero dahil po nakatali ang kontrata, hanggang 2025 at 2029 ay wala tayong magagawa. Kailangan nating bayaran ang kuryenting yan, kailangan nating magbayad sa Meralco. Kahit na po ang Meralco gustong ibaba ang presyo ng kuryente, ay wala silang magagawa. Next slide please. 
Diyan po sa slide na yan, makikita po na ang kuryente na nanggagaling sa First Gas Power Corporation, Santa Rita, at yung FGP Corporation, almost 30% ang binibili sa kanila ng Meralco. Diyan po nakalista rin ang iba pang mga power plants, katulad ng South Premier Power Corporation, San Miguel Energy Corporation, na meron din pong kontrata sa Meralco. Next. Baka mang ulat ka. Ang binayaran po ng Meralco sa kanila noong 2018, 232 billion. Wala, napakahirap, dipinsahan. Ay 241 billion. Ang presyo po, ang binibili natin ng Meralco sa lahat ng power plants ay 86%. So the cost of what we pay, yung binabayaran po ng bawat bahay, 86% po yan ay nanggagaling sa power generation na binibili ng Meralco. Next slide. Diyan po makikita kung ano ang nangyari kung bakit tayo nagkaroon ng kontrata. 1,500 megawatts ang binibili po natin at kontrata na kailangan natin bilin sa FGP Corporation at FGPC which will end in 2025 yung FGPC at yung FGP po 2027. Kung naalala po ng ating mga kasama, nandito rin po yung mga kasama natin, si Chairman Alvarado was part of the Good Government Committee, ang sabi nga po ng Meralco, 55% ng inyong binabayarang kuryente hindi po galing sa amin. Galing doon sa binibili namin sa mga planta. Ang tanong po natin, ba't hindi nyo ibaba? Eh wala po kaming magawa. And if I recall, many of our colleagues were saying, can we review the contracts? Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Councilor Ate. Uh, may I raise a point of order? Uh, gusto ko sanang payagan na magtuloy-tuloy yung manifestation ni Congressman Defensor. Uh, pero po, uh, gusto ko lang banggitin dito na yung issue na nire-raise ni Congressman Defensor about Meralco ay uh, alam naman natin na eh, hindi na yung uh, uh, related sa dapat agenda natin sa hapon na ito. Ako po ay kaisa ni Congressman Defensor. Uh, so sa ping uh, investigahan ang mga maanumalyang kontratang yan uh, na pinasok ng mga nagdaang administrasyon isa ho sa advokasya namin yan pero kung dito po natin ipapasok yan sa puntong ito na ang uh, binanggit natin ay summation ng uh, mga argumento na nangyari noong nakaraang uh, labing dalawang pagdinig uh, nire-raise ko po ito dahil uh, uh, may mga bagong issues na nilalabas dito na hindi nabibigyan ng pagkakataon ang uh, ABS-CBN na sumagot. Kung uh, gustong erase ang mga issues na yan, uh, sa tingin ko, yung uh, Committee on Good Government ay sinasabi nilang magtutuloy-tuloy ang investigasyon nito. Or even sa Committee on Energy, ay wala hong magpipigil na buksan muli ang mga usaping yan. Para lang ho sa magandang daloy ng ating uh, uh, hearing ngayon na malinaw naman ang naka-schedule. Uh, isa sa mission of the hearings we conducted in the past 12 hearings. Uh, sana po ay uh, mabigyan ng uh, katugunan ito ng ating mga nang nangungulo sa meeting na ito. Salamat po. With Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, Vice Chairman Defensor. Mr. Chairman, napakaganda po ng binanggit ni Congressman Sarate. Kunit uh, nung ako po nga po yung magsimula, ang aking binanggit ay yung political bias. Sa isa pong pananaw, Mr. Chairman, at ako nang nanawagan din kay Congressman Sarate, dahil alam ko pong kayo ang isa sa mga nauna upang tingnan at sabihing i-review ang itong mga kontratang to. Congressman Sarate, ang maaaring hindi natin nakikita at bibigyan ko ng pagkakataon sa Magutan Lopez na katulad nga po ng sinasabi ko, ito pong usapin na to ay pagpagtatalaga ng isang oligarkiya. Ang ABS-CBN po ay hindi walay sa Meralco o sa first power plant, sa first generation gas plant. Ito po ay isang galamay ng mga negosyo na kung saan tinutulak nila ang, at ang kanilang interes. At bilang po isa sa mga nagmamahal ng bayan, Congressman Sarate, ako din po nananawagan sa inyo, na wag lang po natin tinanto bilang isyo ng mass media. 
Tingnan natin ang kabuuan na kung saan ang oligarkiya ay tinutulak ang kanilang interes sa pamamagitan ng paggamit ng mass media para po sa katulad nitong negosyo ng pagtaas ng ating kuryente. Nananawagan din po ako sa inyo, Congressman Sarate, na lawakan natin ang ating pananaw sa pagtalakay ng isyo ng ABS-CBN. Ako po'y naniniwala na nakikita ninyo ang maraming mga isyo na bumabalot sa ating lipunan at isa sa inyong mga pinaglalaban ay ang pagtigil ng malalaking interes, ang pagtigil ng mga interes na nakakasama sa ating pangkalatang sambayanan. At kailangan po sana, Mr. Chairman, Congressman Sarate, katulad po ng aking sinabi, nung nahuling hiring po ang mga political vice na banggit, ay hindi po ako, hindi ko po nakikita yung kabu ang pananaw na kung saan nagagamit ang mass media sa isang personal at malalaking negosyanteng interes dito sa ating bansa, Mr. Chairman. Vice Chairman Defensor, uh, sa susunod na linggo po, Wednesday, 1 p.m., ay magkakaroon tayo ng uh, patuloy, pagpapatuloy ng hearing natin sa usapin po ng Miralco at ng uh, iba't iba pang uh, power concessionaires Una, kung paano mapapababa yung singil. Pangalawa, kung paano maaayos yung sistema ng paniningil. At uh, papayagan po kita na Mr. Chairman, ibukas just... ang uh, usapin, ang mas malalim na usapin tungkol sa history ng uh, Meralco mula pa nung uh, panahon ng mga Lopez hanggang po sa pagkakalipat sa bagong uh, ng, mga nagmamayari po at nagmamanage po nito. Sir Chairman, first of all, my yes, manifestation, uh, Vice my, Chairman Devensor. my manifestation is my time. This is a summation, and we have already given the time of summation to the other uh, members of this committee. My manifestation is my time, and I particularly raise an issue on political bias. I'm not going out of hand, Mr. Chairman, because precisely, Meralco was owned by the Lopez. FGP was owned by the Lopezes. FGPC, or the First Gas Power Corporation, is owned by the Lopezes. And I'm saying and I'm putting the connection of ABS-CBN as a mass media corporation connected to these businesses. And so, Mr. Chairman, I'm not talking of, another, of any other business. If I am raising a manifestation based on these points on political biases, then I will say it, Mr. Chairman, because history... If ever we vote to kill this franchise, would show that there are not there are violations of the constitutions and laws of this country, but more importantly, Mr. Chairman, that we did service to our country, to the future of this nation, by killing another oligarchy. And that is my point, Mr. Chairman. Vice Chairman Mike, Mike De Benzora, maraming salamat sa napakagandang punto at uh... Both chairman of this joint committee sa uh, ay taas no ay ay uh, mataas po ang uh, pagtingin lalong-lalo na sa mga bagay na isinawalat mo ngayong araw na ito at uh, maganda rin po na narinig ng ating mga kababayan at uh, sabi ko nga po sa iyo katulad po ng sinabi ko sa iyo kanina bibigyan kita ng mas mahabang oras tungkol sa usaping ito pag sa pagdinig po natin sa Wednesday at para po sa ating uh, mga tagapanood ngayong araw na ito, kayo po ay inaanyayahan namin sa magiging hearing patungkol sa Meralco. At uh, marami pa pong uh, sasabihin at mas malalim pang uh, talakayan, kagaya po nito, ang ating mapapakinggan sa ating mga kasama na kongresista at isa na po doon si Vice Chairman Mike Defensor. Uh, Vice Chairman Mike, tapos na ba ang iyong uh, manifestation o ipagpapatuloy mo pa ang iyong Mr. manifestation? Mr. Chairman, three more slides. Actually po, tatlong slides lang po, tapos na po ako. You may continue, uh, Vice Chairman Defensor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next slide, please. Sige po, Mr. Chairman, isasummarize ko lang po dun sa... Yan. Kung makikita nyo po, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, nagsimula po to ng 2010, ang pong garantiya, guaranteed, na kailangan natin bilhin ay 14 uh, billion 295 million, million kilowatt hours. 
at 63 billion 574 million. Nung 2015 po, 89 billion 994 million. Next slide, please. Mr. Chairman, ito po ang pangkalat ang binabayaran ng 2011, 2012, 2013. Again, it's 55 billion 360 million for First Gas Power Corporation and FGP, 2011, 2012, 2013. Next slide, please. Mr. Chairman, I will just end my manifestation. Inuulit ko po, ang nagsalita po tayo ng political bias hindi para sa personal na ating pananaw. Pag nagsalita tayo ng bias, tinitingnan natin ang malawakang impluensya ng mass media sa kanilang negosyo. Totoo, sa sitwasyon natin ngayon, maraming negosyante kinokontrol ng politika. Pero ibibigay mo pa ang pagkontrol ng mass media para itulak ang agenda at interes ng malalaking negosyante. That, Mr. Chairman, I will not allow. Thank you. Maraming salamat, Kong Defensor. Ang sunod po na magbibigay ng kanyang manifestation ay si Congressman Mark Go. Congressman Go. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman, Congressman Franz Alvarez of the Committee on Legislative Franchises. Mr. Chairman, Jonathan Alvarado of the Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability. Honorable members of this August body, our friends from ABS-CBN, fellow sponsors, friends, ladies and gentlemen, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Let it be known that in the issue of granting ABS-CBN a new franchise, those bearing the brunt of the commotion surrounding it are not limited to the Lopez's or the Katig Box or the network's rooster of celebrities. Those who undoubtedly suffer from the lack of decisive action on ABS-CBN's authorization to operate, apart from the 11,071 workers and their families who stand to lose their livelihood in this pandemic, are the Filipino people. After having been present in all the 12 hearings on the franchise, having listened to the allegations forwarded by my honorable colleagues in Congress, my position remains that the franchise of ABS-CBN be swiftly granted. The issue surrounding ABS-CBN's franchise is ultimately an issue of public service and the national economy. As the largest broadcasting network in the country, ABS-CBN has undoubtedly been at the forefront of providing genuine public service to the Filipino people. When ABS-CBN's free television and radio broadcasts were shut down, many Filipinos in remote areas and less privileged communities lost their only source of information and entertainment. Vital, especially in today's times as we deal with the physical and psychological effects of the pandemic and the community quarantine. Over the years, ABS-CBN has served as a primary source of information in times of natural calamities, terror attacks, and public health crisis. The network has always been at the forefront of mobilizing Filipinos in soliciting donations and joining relief operations during challenging times. As ABS-CBN's free broadcasts were ordered to be closed, we lost one of the biggest partners in communicating to Filipinos, not only public health and safety measures, but also our national policies, guidelines, and plans of action in this fight against COVID-19. In a world where disinformation has become prevalent and information and knowledge sharing is crucial in transitioning to a new normal, are we choosing to leave behind in darkness the many Filipinos from far-flung areas reached only by broadcast signals of ABS-CBN? Are we going to leave households vulnerable to the wrath of natural and public health calamities? For 60 years, ABS-CBN has not wavered in providing public service to the Filipino people. And to deny ABS-CBN a new franchise in these times is to deny the public of this renowned brand of public service when they need it most. 
As much as their public service creates a significant impact on the Filipino people, ABS-CBN is also a large contributor and driver of our national economy. In the last couple of months, we witnessed industries and global companies shut and or reduce their operations, leave the country, such as Honda, Philippines, Nokia, and Wells Fargo, and other enterprises, leaving behind thousands of Philippine workers without jobs to support themselves and their families in this crisis. Our local airline industry took a massive hit when we closed our local and international borders. Soon after, Philippine Airlines, Cebu Pacific, Air Asia, and One Aviation Ground Handling announced the retrenchment of thousands of their workers. Last April, our unemployment rate spiked at an all-time high of 17.7% or 7.3 million Filipinos, all left without jobs and at the mercy of the wrath of this pandemic, not including thousands of returning OFWs. As ABS-CBN is the largest employer in the country's media and entertainment industry, and is committed to the care and well-being of its workers, especially amid this crisis, why should we actively choose to cut the livelihood of 11,071 employees, talents and service providers? It is a disservice to the interest of the Filipino people that we, the representatives who sworn an oath of public service, add to the rising toll of the unemployed and underemployed. We have more 11 million Filipino workers and their families who are asking that we allow them to continue in using their craft for nation building as taxpayers, as contributors to national productivity, as a source of Philippine of Filipino pride. It is it was adequately shown during our hearings that ABS-CBN has been duly paying its obligations to the government. According to the BIA representative, ABS-CBN has paid more than 15 billion in taxes from 2016 to 2019 alone. The company has consistently been issued a tax clearance by the BIR showing that it has duly paid its taxes. This is what we forgo, we choose not to, if we choose not to grant ABS-CBN a new franchise. We have a ballooning death. Our economy needs to recover from the prolonged quarantine. And we need all the help we can get in order to support the programs of this administration, not only in combating COVID-19, but in all its future programs as well. By no means am I alleging that ABS-CBN is a perfect or a flawless company. Perhaps there is not any. I have done my part to listen to the different sides presented in this hearing, in the spirit of fairness. Ultimately, however, the court is the proper forum to resolve if there is merit in the allegations thrown at the corporation. Thus, I implore my honorable colleagues to grant ABS-CBN a new franchise. Let us allow the company to partner with us in serving the Filipino people. Let us allow the company to correct its mistakes and hold them accountable should there be a clear finding of any violation of the relevant laws. Let us save the 11,071 Filipino workers and their families whose security is now hanging by a thread. When we grant ABS-CBN a new franchise, we work towards the interests of public service and the country's economy. Marami pong salamat at magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. Marami salamat, Congressman Go. Susunod po na magbibigay na kanyang manifestation ay si Congressman P.D. Barsaga. Kung PD, magandang magandang hapon sa ating mga kasama. Unang-una sa aking pananaw, ang malayang pamamahayag 
of press freedom ay hindi issue sa ating renewal. Alam ng bawat isa sa atin na itinatadhana ng ating saligang batas ang karapatan for press freedom. At alam din ng bawat isa sa atin na base sa saligang batas, binibigyan din ng karapatan ang Kongreso ng Republika ng Pilipinas whether to approve or not to approve any franchise application including mass media. Kung sasabihin natin na magkakaroon ng paglabag ng malayang pamamahayag kung hindi natin aaprubahan ang prangkisa na ina-apply sa atin, then our constitutional right and obligation to act on franchise application which is exclusive to the House of Representatives is meaningless, it would be useless, it would be merely illusory. Kaya sa aking tingin, hindi issue ang press freedom sa renewal o sa denial ng franchise ng ABS-CBN. Sa ating mga paghihiring, sa ating mga paghihiring, nakita natin ang ABS Holdings Corporation. Dito lahat nilalagak ang mga shares of stocks ng ABS-CBN Corporation na umabot sa daang-daang milyong shares of stocks at PDR. Mula, ngunit mula noong 1999, hanggang sa kasulukuyan, inamin ng accountant ng ABS-CBN Holdings Corporation na wala silang opisina, na wala silang full-time employee, at higit sa lahat, Bagamat sila kung minsan ay mayroong net loss, mayroong mga milyong-milyong operating expenses, daang-daang milyong interest income, munit wala silang net income, every year wala silang binabayad na taxes. Nakita rin natin ang big dipper na kung saan ito ay PESA registered, nagkakaroon ng pre-importation, nagkakaroon ng mga nagkakaroon ng mga malalaking income, ngunit tax exempt sa PESA. Sinabi rin ng mga kinatawan ng ABS-CBN na kung sakasakaling meron silang hindi nabayarang buwis at magkakaroon ng assessment ang Bureau of Internal Revenue, they have the right to protest at kung kinakailangan, pwede silang makikompromise sapagkat ito ay isang karapatan na itinatadhana ng National Internal Revenue Code. Sa madaling sabi, ang lagi nilang sinasabi, tax avoidance ang aming ginagawa at kung anumang karapatan ang aming ginagawa na hakbang, ito ay, ito ay inaalaw o pinagbibigyan o hinahayaan ng ating mga batas. Narinig din natin, ang mga hinaing ng mga empleyado ng ABS-CBN, katulad ni Weng Hidalgo, magpapail sila ng kaso, magpapail sa labor arbitration, aabutin ng toon, kapag sila ay nanalo o natalo, dadalin sa National Labor Relations Commission, dadalin sa Court of Appeals, and finally sa Korte Suprema. Umaabot ng labing limang toon. At ang laging sinasabi ng ABS-CBN, that is our right. The right to contest the, the case filed against us from labor arbitration up to the Supreme Court. At sa usapin naman ng taxes, ang inihing ng kapayan. Ang laging lang sinasabi, kung pidi. Pag taxes ang pinag-uusapan, alam nyo naman na kaming salaried employees a 15 at katapusan, automatic ang pagtatanggal ng aming withholding tax. Pero pagdating naman sa malalaking korporasyon, nakikita namin base sa inyong investigasyon at pahayag na hindi sila nagtatama, nagbabayad ng tamang buwis. Bilang isang mananggol, lagi naming sinasabi at laging pinapaalala sa akin ng ating mga magagaling na hukong 
not everything licit is honorable. Hindi lahat ng hindi lahat ng hinahayaan ng batas ay marangal. We have the so-called corporate social responsibility. Meron din tayong ethical and moral considerations. Ngunit sa daang daang ngunit sa bilyong bilyong kita ng ABS-CBN, bagamat sila ay may tax avoidance, bagamat ang kanilang ginagawa sa apelasyon ng kanilang mga empleyado o sa protest sa Bureau of Internal Revenue ay itinatadana ng ating batas, I think the bigger issue would be the social and moral considerations of a big corporation like ABS-CBN Corporation tungkol sa kanilang pamamalakad para sa kapanan ng bansang Pilipinas. Munti pa akong bata na alala ko ang slogan ng isa sa pinakapopular na pangulo ng ating bansa, si Ramon Magkisay. Ang sabi niya, those who have blessed in life should have more in law. Ngunit sa nakikita ng ating mga kababayan, ang kanilang laging sinasabi sa akin, kung pidi sa ngayon, those who have blessed in life also have less in law. Maraming maraming salamat at maganda nga po sa inyong lahat. Maraming salamat, Kong PD. At ang para sa pinakahuli na magbibigay na kanyang maikling manifestation, Congressman Bebat Abelianosa. Paki-unmute po, Kong Bebat. Okay. Am I heard already, Mr. Chairman? Okay na po. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon to all of us who are into these proceedings now. Mr. Chairman, before the Committee on Legislative Franchises subjects the issue to a vote, with the indulgence of the Chair and the members, Allow me to make a few manifestations. Mr. Chairman, ABS-CBN through its various programs has been a significant part of many Filipinos' lives. For almost seven decades, ABS-CBN has played a role in the Filipino household. It has served as a companion on the ride to and from work, a reprieve for some from their dull and dreary days as they reimagine their lives through the daily series and movie characters, a primary source of news and information, especially for those with limited or non-existent access to the internet. For several thousands, one that provides an opportunity to earn either through employment or business transactions, and sometimes even to a lucky few a fairy godmother that makes their wishes and dreams come true. To deprive them of a franchise is tantamount to curtailment of the freedom of expression, a basic right that has been enshrined in our 1987 constitution precisely because of a similar, though not exactly the same series of events that threatened and derided such freedom of the press. Mr. Chairman, our mandate as Congress is to grant franchises so that public utilities, including broadcast networks, may be allowed to operate. If in the course of their operations, they violated some laws, then let the courts settle this, as that is the mandate of the judiciary, not ours. On the arguments about the corporation being an unjust employer, is our solution then a total shutdown? So those employees enjoy proper benefits and salaries would equally lose their jobs? Should we also cancel the franchises of other networks engaging in similar practice, including the government-owned PTV4? We have been crying for unbiased media reporting, yet we complain when new segments go against our favor. This is a time of crisis, Mr. Chairman. We are in the midst of a pandemic that not only cost our health systems numerous problems with a continuously growing number 
of cases, but has also crippled our economy because of the necessary lockdown that was imposed in most of the country, especially here in the city of Cebu. The government, in its efforts to minimize the economic impact of the pandemic, has designed programs to assist companies to enable them to sustain their operations, thereby generating revenues and keeping employees at their jobs to shut down an institution that has lasted for two thirds of a century, one that has contributed greatly to economic activity, both directly and indirectly, would be an incongruent step towards the country's economic recovery. Mr. Chairman, I would like to ask that the committee members to really listen to their constituents and to vote according to the dictates of their conscience. I am, however, hoping that this issue can still proceed and be taken up in second reading, on third reading in the plenary to give opportunity to all of us representatives of the people. To all members of the Committee on Legislative Franchises and to have our voices also heard and our votes counted given that this issue is of national importance. And in the end, Mr. Chairman, after everything has been said for or against the bills seeking the grant of the ABS-CBN franchise, this representation from the second district of Cebu City humbly calls on the members of the Committee on Legislative Franchises and the others who are called upon today to render a crucial judgment, let us pause for a while, bow our heads in humility, close our eyes to our personal biases in order to open and let in a greater vision for our nation and to seek further erudition and wisdom from the Almighty. And as we examine our conscience guided by the enlightenment of the divine providence in making a final judicious vote, please ponder and cogitate and ask ourselves questions. Talk to our conscience and make a judgment, a wise and judicious judgment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Maraming salamat kong Abelianosa. At ngayon naman po, atin pong... Uh, uh, meeting suspended for a few minutes.